How's it going? How's it going? How are you today? <laughs> Good. You guys got a lot of appliances. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of power sockets. You're ready for it. Ready There's for one anything. more for you. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, Here we are. Yes. Uh, yeah, by all means. So, uh, I didn't think of any spoilers, but uh, is there any particular thing that you loved about season two that you're looking forward to people seeing? In relation to my character or just in oh, general? Yeah, in to your character. I think that. Um, for me, one of the most exciting things about this season is that we really get to delve into Connor's story of identity and, and he gets to figure out and wrestle with really who he is and who he, he, who he wants to be. Uh, it's something that we've scratched the surface on in the past and we've alluded to it, but um, this season we're picking up those story threads that from way back in season two when we first introduced the character and uh, now we get to fully kind of go in and explore those uh, those great themes and, and those two influences of the Superman and the, the Lex Luthor and how they coalesce into this one person, Connor, and, and the different directions that, that he could go, potentially. That's, I think, the most intriguing thing. What's going on? I'm not there. And here we are. So, yeah, my question is, uh, where we pick up with uh, Connor at the start of the season? Where is he at emotionally? Well, it's interesting because um, after the events of season three, he's just had his, his first love, he's had his first heartbreak, and I feel like um, developmentally that, that was quite significant for him. So he's, he's not the same Connor that he was at the beginning of season three. So he's kind of learned and he's, he's done a lot of growing and maturing, and um, in the same sense, um, it'll become clear when, when the season is out that by the end of the fourth season he is so far from where he began at the beginning that it's it's almost like he's a different person entirely he's, it, there's so much growth and so much development and this um, incredible character arc that takes place in season four that I'm, I'm really excited for, for people to see because it's uh, it's not often that you get to have such a such a journey you know, with, within the one character, within one season of a TV show. So, yeah, I think that that's uh, something I'm, look, I'm looking forward to, to sharing with the audience. Oh, I think there are some bangers this, this season. There are some really strong episodes. Um, I've seen episode one. That's the only episode I've seen that was pretty much finished. Um, I think it's great. It's one of, it's one of my probably favorite episodes of, of the whole series. So I'm excited for fans to see the premiere. That, that first episode is, is really great. Um, but in terms of what's to come, I think for Connor, it's episode six that I'm going to be watching keenly to see how people react to that episode. It's tough to talk about without giving anything away, but yeah, episode six for Superboy, for sure. Uh, I gotta admit that the accent kind of caught me off guard for a second because you know, on the show, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much all of the Titans are Australian or British. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> which oh. is cool. So something that's kind of been in the back of my mind bothered me for a while is that you have two superpowered beings on the team that can end a lot of the issues that you guys have in like one episode. How do you, how do you kind of just like get around like removing Superboy constantly from solving the issue quickly in the show. It's a diff difficult balancing act for the writers and it's it's tough to pull off because you're right. Um, any any kind of threat that the Titans face, um, the audience is going to be sitting there going like, hang on, well, couldn't Superboy just do this and right, then solve? Right. <laughs> and, and you could apply that to, to Starfire and Raven and one of the other amazing things about this season is that we're dealing with villains that are uh, incredibly powerful and they they wield dark magic and fans of the comics and other media will know that Kryptonians are notoriously vulnerable to magic so one of the big things for Connor this season is coming to terms with that vulnerability because this is a guy that has, hasn't been alive for very long but during that time that he's been alive he's been invincible no one's he's never really lost a fight He's never really had 
true difficulty kind of no one's been able to hurt him physically and all of a sudden he's uh, encountering these people that have these terrifying magical abilities that can really just lay him out so this season in particular really tackles that issue in uh, in a big way in, in terms of um, bringing in adversaries that that present a genuine challenge and a threat to the Titans. Okay. No, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Hi. I was wondering, like, because, um, you know, given that you're playing Super Boy and you've seen the journey of the girl far, I'm pretty sure I've seen the comics and knowing the nature between, like, uh, Super Boy and some of his uh, fellow Titan members. Were there any particular moments in you know, this season that you feel like uh, represent some of those elements of the team doing the grace? We get more scenes than the grace in this time around. Oh, yeah. Big time. I think, uh, again, I keep coming up with all these dot points here, that one of the, another one of the great things about this season is the interplay between the characters and uh, those uh, dynamics kind of uh, between the characters within the team. So you've got the brotherly relationship with Beast Boy, you've got the pseudo-fatherly relationship with Dick Grayson, you've got um, this new kind of budding friendship with, with Tim Drake, who's now joined the team. and. Um, all of these are kind of unique in their own way and uh, I think fans are really going to respond to um, those specific little interactions and how those relationships are, are unique and, and uh, are differentiated by, you know, within the team. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't want to give, I don't want to give too much away, but um, those those relationships, um, particularly the relationship with Dick Grayson, play play a big role in Connor's story this season. And uh, Connor has to rely on his family, and like any kind of kid growing up, he wants to rebel, but then he comes back, you know. And you you see those relationships shift, and you see the uh, just how important uh, those people are to him in his life. Um. So your character, excuse me, your character in the show in general really reach into some far corners of the DC universe. Yep. And I'm wondering as an actor, when you read on the script that they're going to be bringing something like that to life, do you lean more anxious or do you lean more excited? Excited. Because I'm a fan of all this stuff. I'm, I'm a fan of the genre. Um, I've read some comics. I watched a lot of the cartoons growing up and uh, that stuff whenever I see anything new it just makes me giddy and excited and then maybe on the day of shooting uh, if there's something particularly significant that we have to pull off that I know is going to come under a lot of scrutiny then I might all of a sudden start to feel the anxiety and the, and the pressure of that but um, that's really not conducive to creativity so you kind of have to squash that down and allow yourself to uh, to be to be creative and, and trust what's on the page and, and trust all of the talented people that you're working with that you know are going to bring this, this story to life and introduce these elements that, as you say, people, uh, people are quite attached to. Um, any time that an actor steps into any role that's Superman, right. um, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Such an iconic role. Um, how has that kind of pressure changed over the course of the, you know, the time that you play the character, the different scenes? That's a good question. Um, the I think at the beginning is when I felt the most pressure, um, when no one had kind of seen what we were going to do or what I was going to be like in the role and people had a lot of ideas and preconceived kind of notions of who this character is and what they wanted to see and um, once they were kind of presented with our interpretation and, and me in the role, um, I've, I've really been feeling the love from the fans and I, I really appreciate that. I'm really proud of what we've done. Um, I'm proud of uh, the past two seasons, but particularly this season, I'm, I'm proud of how we've developed the character and the different directions we've taken him in because there's still so much to mind there and there's still so much depth to this character that, uh, that we're uncovering and finding and um, I think the fans are really going to respond to that. So now, I, my approach now is just one of uh, confidence and excitement and uh, I feel a certain sense of ownership now that maybe I didn't really have in season two and I kind of feel like I know the character very well now and I, um, in some ways I, I have a, somewhat of an authority in terms of um, I know 
which creative choices are gonna are gonna pay off, and maybe which ones we should steer away from. And um, that only just comes from time and yeah, time in the role. And yeah, that 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 pressure isn't something that I really worry about. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.